Hello everybody, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we'll have a, a great and intense discussion on bioinformatics and its role in biotechnology. So let's dive in. Welcome back. So for today, we will have a, a, a great and a beautiful discussion on how exactly bioinformatics and its role in biotechnology has actually created a different paradigmic shift in the way we actually look at it. Now, before we start, we will try to understand what exactly is biotechnology. Now, if you remember, bio and technology, bio refers to biology and technology refers to a comp, you know, a, a process in which you can you can actually maximize the efficacy and you can utilize the implicability of a particular technology onto biology. Now, why do you want to use technology with that of biology? This is to explore newer components and newer components which can lead into better food, newer components which can lead into better pharmaceutics and newer components which can lead into better cosmetics. So, you know, food, pharma and cosmetics are the three important fields in which biotechnology has actually created a, a completed uh, boom, okay, which has been actually can seen uh, from the last 10-15 years. Now, so this was with regard to biotechnology. Now, what is bioinformatics? Now, the uh, you know, the data what we have got from biotechnology is so huge, it is so big that, you know, manually curating data becomes impossible. So now, because of the huge data, so what we need to do is, we need to use technology to understand biology and especially this technology is computer science. Now, I'm using the power of computer science to understand biology and if I am trying to amalgamate biology and its understanding with that of computers, this branch is called as bioinformatics. So now at one hand I have biotechnology and on another hand I have bioinformatics. Now let us try to see what happens when we have a marriage, when we amalgamate these two sciences and this can lead into an entire newer science and this science can actually help in understanding you know, various kinds of you know challenges, various kinds of opportunities uh, which can actually be explored and exploited for the benefit of humankind. Now, we, we start with central dogma. Now, when we start with central dogma, we know that it is genomics. From genomics, you have transcriptomics and from transcriptomics, you have proteomics. But however, you know, the understanding of genomics was so vast, then people thought, why don't we extend the component of genomics to an other level? And this higher level is called as comparative genomics. Now, in comparative genomics, I would compare between, you know, host pathogen interaction, host host interaction, pathogen pathogen interaction, pathogen with with biotic interactions and pathogen with abiotic interactions. So I can look into the various components so that I can have a 360 degree view of a, a particular genome and that is very much important, you know, which is possible with, you know, comparative genomics. Now, this genomics could be again looked into its transcriptomic level wherein I am looking into the gene expression pattern, whether a gene has been upregulated or it has been downregulated and what is the modulation pattern of a particular gene could be understood with transcriptomics. However, at the end, we know that every gene produces a particular protein and this protein is the end product. Now, protein folding, protein stability, protein functioning and protein bioactivity plays a very, very crucial role in any organism and hence understanding this in terms of biotechnology and in terms of bioinformatics becomes very very crucial. Now this was just the classical central dogma but however in modern central dogma we all know that you know proceeding forward with that of the protein you have something which is called as metabolome that is you have a metabolite which is coming from this particular protein either it could be a primary metabolite secondary metabolite and tertiary metabolite and these metabolites could be used for human welfare so hence understanding the metabolomic part of it uh, is very very crucial now please remember bioinformatics is just like a toolkit so i can use this particular toolkit for understanding various kinds of biosystems either it could be a plant it could be a microbe, it could be human, it could be an animal, it could be a rodent, it could be an aquatic organism, whatever. But however, you know, the tool remains the same, but only the difference is with the bioorganism, which we are trying to implicate the rules of this particular tool or the package or the software to understand those 
the organisms in a much better way. So with these particular tools, softwares and packages, what you get is you get a desired results. Now these desired results, remember, these are predictions. Now in 80 to 85% of the cases, these predictions are actually right. But however, you need to always validate it. Before you try to have a bigger claim, you need to always validate by informatics. Okay, and once you validate it using your wet lab experiment, that is where you know your bioinformatics and your biotechnology has a concrete idea and this is how it emerges into a newer and interesting results. Now, with these new combinations, what are the various branch of science or branch of biology which could be actually explored? Now, a greater component because most of our students, okay, they talk about, sir, I want to use the applications of biotechnology in agriculture. So here is what a new branch which is called as agriculture biotechnology. You can talk about nutritional biotechnology. You can talk about health and medicine. You can talk about industrial biotechnology. The other one is bioweapon. I do not you know, try to uh, give a lot of illustrations on it. But yes, bioweapon is also one of the major component. Uh, you have the environmental biotechnology, you have the arid biotechnology, you have marine biotechnology, huge scope uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the current scenario, marine biotechnology. Then you have uh, the applications of biotechnology in bioinformatics and bioinformatics into biotechnology so that newer, newer science have been developed every day, every minute, every second. And very, very important, I should also understand once I have a discovery or an invention, how do I make it uh, under my particular name? So the, I need to also understand the proprietary of my research and to understand this proprietary, the law and ethics plays a very, very important role. And hence ethics, when it is applied onto biotechnology, it is called as bioethics and law. Okay, which has been applied onto biotechnology, it is called as IPR. The IPR refers to intellectual property rights. So all these branches plays a very, very important role. Please remember, my dear friends, all these you know uh, uh, disciplines are booming up. It has a lot of scope. So just think out of the box. And when you think out of the box, the innovation and creativity has been kindled. And that is where you come out with a new product, which could be either patentable or it can go for a manuscript or a publication or, you know, you can go for a copyright. Now, what is the evolution of biotechnology? Now, when you look into the evolution of biotechnology, there are four major evolutions what I have uh, seen. So the first uh, evolution was in terms of blue technology, wherein people were like extraordinarily focused with, uh, you know, the water and the marine technologies. Then it came on to the red technology, wherein human health was the major priority in the under uh, red biotechnology. And then you had something which is called as, you know, industrialization, especially with white biotechnology, wherein, uh, you know, various kinds of metabolites, you know, milk, all these kind of industrial products were explored. And this is where your white biotechnology comes into picture. And not to forget, uh, you have uh, green biotechnology, wherein new crop variety, new breeds, new crosses, all these were developed. Uh, this is resistant variety, drought resistant variety, all these were gen generated during, you know, your green, your green biotechnology. But however, now we stand at a point wherein this entire biotechnology is meeting bioinformatics. Now, when bioinformatics meets biotechnology, there is a boom and this boom has led into a newer biotechnology and this newer biotechnology has led into a great revolution and this revolution is called as the data revolution. So now we are uh, standing at a point wherein data is is everything either it could be your personal data uh, in terms of your fingerprint or your iris scan but however it could be here the major emphasis is on your bio data okay so once you have the biological data which has been screened either your your, your proteome has been screened or your entire genome has been screened now this acts as your data Okay, so this data could be used for security systems. This data has been used for identification systems. This data could be used for various kinds of disease and diagnosis. And people are now have been crazy enough to look upon this particular genome and predict when exactly they die. So trust me, my dear friends, now everybody has money, but nobody wants to die with this. Okay, people want to predict their death. Okay, by measuring various kinds of, uh, you know, biomarkers from telomeres, etc, etc. Okay, so this is how, you know, your genomic data could be either explored or exploited. Now, <clears throat> with this, 
people has come up with newer biotechnology what we have not mentioned previously the newer component is understanding the you know uh, the dna protein sequencing management understanding the drug design management understanding the homology ab initio methods domain predictions annotations and dynamic simulation studies could be very easily done using bioinformatics so that you can have a greater impact on biotechnological understanding now moving on forward you have nutri genomics a fantastic branch which will understand the genomics and that of nutrition so this is called as nutri genomics microbial genome uh, very importantly in terms of microbiota okay or microbiome research which is like the the booming component and very importantly we can use the laws of bioinformatics in forensic science now in forensic science you know depending on what exactly is your case okay you can actually explore the power of bioinformatics in biotechnology so uh, the the ultimate line what if you uh, you know if i am suggesting something to you the ultimate line or the ultimate conclusion what i am trying to make you understand is this is a very very promising technology this offers a promising future to accelerate the scientific research especially in biotechnology so i urge i appeal all my young friends to take up research as one of the major component because the next 10 years especially in india research will dominate okay a uh, government is trying to put up lot of funds uh, at uh, you know degree level at master degree level and at a uh, phd and a post doctoral level so please utilize this facility now uh, most of my students when they actually you know try to uh, come into the internship okay or they are doing certain certification courses at biotechnica they ask a very common question sir uh, how do i use the laws of bioinformatics especially in agriculture so here is an important illustration which talks about the application of bioinformatics in crop improvement so here either i can look into the uh, the protein component rna component dna component metabolomic component epigenomic component a phenomic component or interactome component okay and when i look into this i can i can still use the laws of bioinformatics and this is called as computational analysis and this computational analysis will help me in creating a huge database and this huge database is called as crop plant database when i talk about crop plant database this will actually enhance the knowledge discovery of the plant breeding and then very importantly can lead into you know crop plant with a better yield and a better quality now if you look into the the genomics you know just to give you an illustration imagine that i have a particular cell and from this particular cell i am trying to isolate a selected target and once i have the selected target i can go for various kinds of crystallographic analysis for the selection of that bio target and then i can look upon this target belongs to what family of uh, the proteins and with this protein family i can look for the structure and functional characterization and when i look into the structure and the functional characterization later i can go into homology modeling and with homology modeling i can go for functional studies drug development and metabolic pathway development this creates a huge impact on uh, the farmers on the agricultural scientists and this can be created into a base and this is called as a, a crop uh, or a, you know you can you can call it as a microbe uh, database or you can call it as plant database or you can call it as a protein database specially dedicated towards plants so you can have various kinds of combination of databases now how is this been done this has been done very very easily that is you know you start extracting genome genome and then you sequence it once you do that you can create an assembly and before you create an assembly you can actually look into the binning component wherein you can create the phylogenetic relationship with the sequences what you have got and the sequences which are already available in the database and then you can go for gene production and with the gene production you can also look for gene annotation and once you have the gene annotation the data is already there for the entire scientific fraternity to utilize it for the welfare of humans now i was talking about uh, you know uh, comparative genomics now once i have the data now it becomes very very important that i am not interested in looking into an individual or species specific data i want to look into a data which is like cross species data so when i look into the cross species data i want to look into what are these microorganism doing in humans what is the same microorganism doing in a rodent or a mouse model or a murine model then what is the same microorganism doing with uh, you know uh, the fish model or 
or I can go for what are the various kinds of you know, amphibians or various kinds of plant, you know, you know, it is all depending on the level of creativity and the way you think out of the box that can lead into a various kinds of results and especially comparative genomics is one such approach. Now, finally, you can also go into the, the, the proteomic approach wherein uh, especially you can look for various kinds of diseases, you can look for various kinds of stress factors, you can look for various problems which have been encountered uh, for the crop improvement in very very much uh, important in terms of yield because now you know the, there is a prop population explosion and now we are into a situation wherein the, the soil fertility is lost and on the other way the crop per yield is also getting reduced now without adding any kinds of pesticides or insecticides how do I actually improve the improve the crop uh, uh, crop of a given uh, you know season so that this can actually lead into a huge advantage to the farmer also or, or to the end consumer. So this is where you can have either tissue culture approach and from there you can isolate certain important proteins from there from the protein you can also understand the peptides. This peptides can undergo various kinds of analytical tools wherein you know you can do LCMS, LCMSMS and then finally you go for the, the target identification and search and then finally you go for protein sequence assembly and with various kinds of databases okay you are able to understand okay how do I combat how do I actually you know give up a solution for a disease or for stress or how do I improve a crop of a uh, you know, how do I improve a yield of a given crop now you know these are the again you know on, on a very short mode I have given you certain titles certain captions that these are the various 18 different fields in which you know bioinformatics can play an extraordinary role especially in terms of uh, crop improvement and crop biology so you know just to conclude uh, we have biotechnology we have understood biology and now with this as you know biology and the combination of technology you have biotechnology now and now the only emergence is you need to use computers and when you use computers to understand this biotechnology here comes a beautiful branch and this is like a huge ocean so you know you need to have a, a, a view of what exactly you are looking at now you know it is like uh, identifying or searching for a needle in a haystack so hence you as a researcher you should know what exactly is your focus now without deviating from your focus uh, trust me my dear friends in bioinformatics and in biology if you have patience and if you have creativity and if you are dedicated and with your perseverance whatever you are trying to look at uh, look upon okay you you will get it you will get it but the only time is you know there's a time factor and also the amount of hard work which goes into that particular search makes up a difference and your level of understanding of the concept clear makes a clear differentiation upon you know what do you actually look at so with this i would always you know urge people to take up various courses uh, which can upgrade you, which can make you understand transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary and interdisciplinary sciences so that you can start, uh, you know, start understanding integrative sciences and this has been possible with various kinds of internship courses and various kinds of certification courses, various kinds of workshops which have been actually organized by Biotechnica. At Biotechnica, we make sure that your success is our success. So your motivation is our motivation. So you know I request everybody all the biotechnicians all the subscribers who have not subscribed please subscribe to Biotechno uh, Biotechnica and Rasayanica because our intention is to upgrade and when we upgrade okay we are able to create a holistic society. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much. If you have any suggestions please do not forget to uh, comment in the comment box. So thank you very much. All the very best. Take care.